What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. This week we are uploading a different type of video. Um, this one is more specifically geared towards the physician assistant community. And it's just a short presentation that I've pieced together on a more effective way to convince your patient to stop smoking. Um, whether you're working in emergency medicine or in primary care, uh, inevitably you're going to have interactions with patients um, who come in probably with respiratory issues um, who are going to ask you, you know, how do I quit smoking? And for most providers, um, we struggle with this because we use, I think, traditional narratives that have just not been very effective. Um, so let's go ahead and just kind of talk about that for a minute. Uh, for a preface, my name is Nick Tu. I'm a physician assistant uh, working in emergency medicine in Lewiston, Idaho. Um, again, the presentation and the content in this video are my own thoughts and opinions. They are not that of the hospital that I work for, nor are they of the provider group that employs me. Uh, and this video is being used simply for education purposes. Okay, so common strategies don't work with most patients. Um, you know, saying that smoking is bad for your health is something that your patient population who smokes has probably heard a million times. And obviously, this is not an effective statement because if it was, um, they wouldn't be asking you for help. And again, the social stigma of smoking, I don't think, is very effective either. Uh, a lot of your patients have come from backgrounds where they grew up in smoking homes um, or they've been smoking for years and are likely surrounded by friends and family who also smoke. So to them, it is completely socially acceptable to smoke cigarettes. Um, so putting a stigma on this is not going to be very effective either. And using buzzwords like cancer or COPD, in my opinion, are rarely ever effective. Um, most of your patients are only going to be intimidated or scared by lung cancer, uh, respiratory distress or arrest, or heaven forbid being intubated once they've actually experienced them. Um, so in terms of coming up with a strategy from a preventative health standpoint, I think the narrative needs to change. And this is this, the strategy that I use in the room when I'm talking to a patient about discontinuing smoking. So let's use a financial model instead. And the pros of this is that uh, it's an effective way for patients who come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds um, to earn an additional interest in quitting. And this only requires about five minutes of your time and the ability to do basic math, which if you've graduated PA school or medical school, then this should be a no-brainer for you. Um, and this is likely a different narrative that your patients will not have heard before um, or have really ever considered it when they view their smoking habit from a long-term financial standpoint. Uh, one of the cons is that this is obviously less effective for patients who are older than 65. Um, this really hits home with patients who have a lot of quality years of life ahead of them. Um, so do keep that in mind. This is not a perfect strategy, but I do think that it is a more effective strategy than the previous narratives that we talked about. So here's the narrative. Let's just use a case scenario where you've got a 45-year-old male or female who's been smoking one pack per day for the last 20 years. So go ahead and open up and ask your patient, you know, here's something to consider regarding your smoking habit and just ask them how much is a pack of cigarettes and stop and let them answer that question. Uh, you know, the average cost of a pack of cigarettes is probably around $5.00. It's probably a little bit less or a little bit more, but if you round out, I think $5 is a reasonable um, starting point. And the more expensive the cigarettes are, the stronger your argument becomes. Uh, once the patient gives you that information, then you just ask them, you know, how many packs do you smoke a day and for how long? And again, the greater your patients pack your history, uh, the stronger your argument becomes. So let's say that they smoke one pack per day for the last 20 years. They've got a 20-year um pack history. And then here's where you just let the math do the talking. So at $5 a pack, it is now costing your patient $1,825 a year to smoke. And for the last two decades, the cost of smoking has totaled them $36,500. So ask them, have you ever thought about what you could have done with that money? And this is really important. This is where you have to stop speaking to them and let them kind of soak in that information. 
because a lot of times the patients aren't able to quantify from a dollar standpoint how much it actually costs them to smoke. Now, $5 a pack per day, once at a time, is not that effective to them. But when you give it to them in a yearly cost or the cost of their entire pack history, you know, $36,000 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for you. It's a lot of money for me. Uh, you know, unless you're the CEO of Amazon.com, which he probably would still consider a lot of money. Um, this is, you know, a significant dollar amount that I think will hit home with your patients. So most of my patients who smoke uh, never see this from a financial standpoint. And this is kind of an eye opener to help them realize that, you know, over the over the, the time span of 20 years, they've smoked a brand new truck or very large down payment on a house. And the beauty of seeing it this way is now you have some skin in the game for the patient to consider for the next 10, 20 to 30 years of their life. Um, not to mention all of the associated healthcare costs that come with smoking uh, for that long. Uh, you know, consider how much the cost of an ER visit is and uh, add that onto the total. So in my opinion, this is a more relatable conversation for you to have with your patient. Um, everyone in the room, regardless of their job title, their education level, uh, or whatnot, can relate to wanting a little bit more money to live a better life. And I think your patients will gravitate more towards the financial aspect of what they have to gain from discontinuing smoking than they do any of the other you know, warnings about their long-term health or scaring them about cancer or COPD. Um, and effectively, you've removed yourself from having to, you know, preach to your patients from an ivory tower, because the last thing that your patients want in their life is somebody force feeding them the same narrative of I know what's best for you. Um, that's frustrating to hear. That's not what they've come for. Uh, I think this kind of narrative provides a little bit more value for them. And again, people buy from people that they like. Um, and this method allows you to build better trust with your patients. And in my experience, uh, helps you gain more respect from them as well. So thanks for your time. Uh, I hope you appreciated this presentation. Hopefully you will try to use this uh, narrative the next time you have a patient that comes into your room asking you for help and how to discontinue smoking. Um, and as a sidebar, anybody who's got questions about the PA profession uh, or if you're interested in hearing about my story regarding becoming a PA or navigating PA school and passing the pants, um, feel free to shoot me an email at nick.2 at gmail.com. And uh, while I can't guarantee that I'm the greatest advisor for getting into PA school, um, having been successful at navigating PA school and getting accepted, uh, certainly I can help you with advice regarding your personal statement or if you have questions about the application process. This is my way of paying it forward. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.